Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Our topic for today is structure of anther and development of male gametophyte. So let's begin. So in this section, I'll be talking about the basic structure of anther. In my previous video, if you recall, we have already seen the structure of a flower where we spoke about stamen being the male reproductive part, which consists of anthers and filament. So right now I'll be focusing on the structure of anther. So for you to understand, uh, basically you need to remember three important terms when you talk about structure of anther. Very simple to remember three important terms and I'm going to write those down here. So, when you say a typical angiosperm anther, a typical angiosperm anther. So, I'm going, I'm using the term angiosperm here uh, because angiosperm is the term that refers to flowering plants. So, a typical angiosperm anther is, I'm going to write those three important terms I told you about. First important term over here is bilobed okay first important term is bilobed a typical angiosperm anther is bilobed second important term is dithecus i'm going to highlight that and the third important term is tetrasporangiate tetrasporangiate and I'm going to explain these three terms so that you will be able to remember what they are. So I'll be starting with the first term here, bilobed. So bilobed, if you break the word, it consists of bi, which means two, and lobed, which means two lobes or compartments, right? So a typical anther shows two lobes, right? So if I show you the two lobes in the diagram, this is one lobe and this is another lobe since it has got two lobes you call it as a bilobed anther and hence i have written two lobes here by means two okay coming to the second term which says dithecus again here if i break the word into two i'll underline di and thecus so di over here again means two and thecus the word comes from theca so, what is the meaning of theca? In biology, theca refers to any compartment, right? So, over here, since this is like one compartment and this is like another compartment, we use the word dithecus, which represents two theca or two compartments of an anther, right? Coming to the third and important term, tetrasporangiate. Again, I'm going to divide or break this word into two for you. So, tetra is one word here and second word will be sporangiate. So, over here tetra means four and sporangiate the word comes from microsporangia. I am going to write that term here. Microsporangia. Now, what is microsporangia? Microsporangia are small uh, compartments over here which develops into pollen sacs. They develop into pollen sacs later on. So, in the young anther, you will see microsporangia, which later develops into pollen sacs. But why are we using the term tetrasporangiate here is because total number of microsporangia, if you see, are four. Tetra means four. So, each lobe, each lobe of anther consists of two sporangia or microsporangia. So, total anther will consist of four microsporangia which develop into four pollen sacs. You can refer to the diagram 1, 2, 3, 4, four pollen sacs together, hence the term tetrasporangiate. So, that was about the basic structure. You need to remember these three terms when you talk about structure of anther. So, in this section, I'll be talking about TS of anther. 
Can you guess what TS stands for? Yes, that's right. It is transverse section. And transverse section is nothing but a section that is taken in a horizontal plane. Now over here, this is how anther looks like in a TS or a transverse section. In my previous section, I already mentioned that anther consists of four microsporangia which develop into four pollen sacs. So these are the four microsporangia here, one, two, three and four. And these four microsporangia consist of young tissue inside which we call it as sporogenous tissue. Right? Now, there is another important label here which is called as connective. I am going to highlight that word here. Connective. So, what is connective? Connective is a sterile tissue right in the center of the two lobes of anther. It connects the two lobes and it is also in continuation with the filament of anther. Right. And now for, to understand the other labels of anther, we will look into the magnified image which is shown here. So this microsporangium here is magnified and the image is clearly seen here with all the layers visible. Now epidermis, endothecium, middle layer and tapetum all four are present in the wall of anther so when you talk about a mature anther its wall will show you four layers the outermost protective layer is epidermis which is single celled uh, the second layer is endothecium the third layer is middle layers middle layers generally are two uh, cell layers thick and followed by tapetum which is the innermost layer and out of the four tapetum is extremely important I'll highlight tapetum here tapetum is extremely important because tapetum is uh, nutritive you could say it is a nutritive layer and it provides nourishment to the growing sporogenous tissue there so out of the four epidermis endothecium and middle layers are protective in nature whereas tapetum is nutritive in nature now apart from these four you can also see microspore mother cell over here microspore mother cell now what is microspore mother cell it develops from the sporogenous tissue as I already mentioned, sporogenous tissue is the young tissue that is found in the microsporangia of the anther. Each cell of the sporogenous tissue has the potential to function as a microspore mother cell and each microspore mother cell can give rise to pollen grains. I'll mention that here. So remember that very well each microspore mother cell or also called as a pollen mother cell gives rise to pollen grains. I am going to talk about formation of pollen grains and the structure of pollen grain in the later part of this video but right now I am focusing on the basic structure of anther which is a transverse section. All right now the first two images that is A and B are clear to you all. I hope they are clear. Coming to the third image here, which is labeled as C. If you can see here, this is a mature anther which shows dehiscence. Now, what do you mean by dehiscence? I'm going to mention that term here. Dehiscence. Dehiscence means to release. Right? So, this is an image or a picture of uh, an anther during dehiscence that is during release of pollen grains now in the next section i will be talking about how sporogenous tissue is formed in the anther followed by the structure of pollen grain so in this section i'll be talking about how sporogenous tissue is formed in an anther and how pollen grains are released at the time of dehiscence so this is an image which shows the various stages of development of anther and release of pollen grains i will start with the first one here which is labeled as anther primordium so first of all you need to understand what is primordium 
yes primordium is nothing but a very young tissue so this is how anther looks like at a very very young stage it consists of these meristematic cells that are shown in blue color now these meristematic cells at the end are also called as hypodermal cells now what happens is few of these hypodermal cells get differentiated and form cells called as archesporial cell okay i repeat few of these hypodermal cells get differentiated to form archesporial cells now archesporial cells as they are actively dividing as they are meristematic they further divide into something called as parietal cell and sporogenous cell now the sporogenous cell now forms the sporogenous tissue you can see here how the sporogenous cells has given rise to sporogenous tissue that is how sporogenous tissue is formed and the parietal cell over here gives rise to what we call it as wall layers in my previous section i explained what are the wall layers of anther right they are epidermis middle layers tapetum and there was one more called as endothelium which is shown in this diagram all right so the parietal cell will form these wall layers and the sporogenous cell gives rise to the sporogenous tissue in this particular diagram which is labeled as e sporogenous stage you can see the presence of sporogenous tissue right in the center of the microsporangia now what happens is each sporogenous cell has the potential to function as a pollen mother cell in my previous section i mentioned what is pollen mother cell or a microspore mother cell so the pollen mother cell of sporogenous tissue can give rise to pollen grains or microspores so there is a term used for this process called as microsporogenesis so what is microsporogenesis formation of microspores from the sporogenous cell basically from the pollen mother cell you would say formation of microspores from the pollen mother cell is called as microsporogenesis but before that happens before the microspores are formed there is something called as a pollen tetrad or also called as a microspore tetrad so a pollen mother cell which is a part of sporogenous cell undergoes meiosis to produce four haploid microspore tetrad or four haploid pollen tetrad and then these pollen tetrads or this microspore tetrad forms microspores which are later converted into individual pollen grains and then they are released at the time of dehiscence that is during the uh, releasing of pollen grains i will now talk about development of male gametophyte first of all what do you understand by gametophyte yes it is a plant body in a life cycle of a plant where gametes are produced so let us now understand how a male gametophyte is produced in plants so this is a structure of pollen grain i've shown over here now in this structure you will see that the pollen grain is surrounded by two layers the exine and the intine now both exine and intine together are called as sporoderm let me mention that here sporoderm so sporoderm is a collective term given to the wall of the pollen grain which consists of exine and intine now exine if you see is the outermost tough covering of the pollen grain and it consists of an important structure very very important to note this sporopollenin yes so sporopollenin is a structure it's a substance that is present inside the exine and it makes the exine highly resistant to chemicals or acids or alkali so this is one of the most toughest substance known which is very very resistant to any kind of chemicals 
Now, inner to the exine, you have intine, which is the second layer of the pollen grain. Now, intine is composed of, let me write down here, cellulose and pectin. Right. So, cellulose and pectin are present in the intine. Now, on the membrane, you will see that there is a gap over here and the gap is called as a germ pore. So, germ pore is an aperture or a small gap of exine and it is the point from where the pollen tube emerges. Make a note of this. This is a point from where the pollen tube emerges. All right. Now, this uh, pollen grain consists of two cells. If you notice the two cells here, one is the tube cell and the other is the generator cell. Please remember, tube cell is also called as vegetative cell. This is another name for tube cell. So, tube cell is also called as vegetative cell and this is the larger cell in the pollen grain and the smaller cell is called as generative cell. And over here in the center, you have the nucleus of the tube cell or the nucleus of the vegetative cell. Let us see the other diagram now. Over here, you can see this is the pollen grain and this is the pollen grain, how it looks in a two-celled stage. This is called as a two-celled stage of a pollen grain. Now, there is an important thing to note over here. In almost 60% of angiosperms, the pollen grains are released in this two-celled stage where the pollen grain consists of a vegetative cell and a generative cell. And rest of the species, pollen grains can be released in the three-cell stage. I will explain what is three-cell stage further. Okay. Now, after formation of vegetative and a generative cell, what happens now is the generative cell further divides to give rise to two male gametes. You can see the two male gamete formation here. And in this image, you can see the two male gametes are already formed. So, these two male gametes have arise from the generative cell. And as the pollen tube forms, you can see from the germ pore, the pollen tube has formed. And in the pollen tube, the two male gametes have migrated. And this is the tube nucleus or the vegetative nucleus that is seen in this image. So, this is this represents the male gametophyte in plants. So that's all for today's session. If you find this video helpful, do like, share and subscribe. And feel free to post any questions or doubts in the comment section. See you in the next video.